Number 5. Okeku the doll. Okeku is a Japanese doll that, wait for this, originally had a cropped haircut, but her hair grows back. This doll was originally purchased in 1918 by a 17 year old boy named Akichi Suzuki while visiting Sapporo for a marine exhibition. He bought the doll on Tanyukikaji, Sapporo's famous shopping street as a souvenir for his two-year-old sister Okiku. The young girl loved the doll and played with it every day, but the following year, she died suddenly of a cold. The family placed the doll in the household altar and prayed to it every day in memory of Okiku. Some time later, they noticed the hair had started to grow. This was seen as a sign that the girl's restless spirit had taken refuge in the doll. Number 4. Mandy the Mischievous Doll Mandy was a doll that cries in the middle of the night and leaves windows open. Her turn of the century family eventually gave her to a museum to stop the terror. Now her spirit makes the museum staff's lunches disappear or walks around and frightens people with her footsteps. Mandy is an antique porcelain doll aged over 90 years old, she's supposedly made in Germany or England around 1910 or 1920. She was donated to the Quinsill Museum in British Columbia in 1991, what makes her so unique is the power some says she possesses. Her previous owner donated her to the museum after all the strange things she was supposedly capable of. The owner would wake up to the sounds of a crying baby in the basement. When she went to inspect the basement, she found an open window and no baby. After Mandy was donated to the museum the crying stopped. However the museum staff and volunteers problems were just beginning. Lunches would mysteriously disappear from the refrigerator, and be found tucked away in a drawer. Objects such as pens books and pictures would go missing, some would turn up later. Others, were never found. Footsteps, were heard when no one was around. When she first arrived at the museum she did not, have a place within the building. Mandy sat facing the public entrance where visitors could see her. And later, she was placed in her own case, alone in another part of the museum. Rumors stated that she could not be placed with any other dolls, then again, she may not like being on her own either, after being locked in a room on her own, staff returned to find paper thrown all around the room, like she had a tantrum. She has also been known to make electrical equipment fail. Visitors feel uneasy and sad around her, she also has a tendency to blink or her eyes have followed guests around the room and her fingers and head are also said to have moved on occasion. Number 3. Ted the Haunted Clown Doll Not much can be said about this doll but it's still freaky as heck, do you suffer from chlorophobia? If so this is not one for you the word chlorophobia means a persistent and irrational fear of clowns. It possibly originates from Greek kolong meaning stilt or stilt walkers which are often used by clowns. But if you have a phobia then leave the video running for a couple of minutes and go have a tea, or whatever to pass the time the new owner, anyways. Back to the story. Ted the haunted clown doll is said to be haunted by its previous owner. Unfortunately there is not much we could research about this doll. But the new owner claims since he got the doll he would hear strange sounds, loud crying and the doll would move on its own, when the owner filmed the doll he found it had moved three feet from where he had left it. 
The doll's shoe pads are worn out on some pictures of the doll, have a strange energy around it. Number 2. Robert the Haunted Doll. This was a tough one between number 1 and number 2, who gets the top spot. In my opinion I would say they are both as equally scary, but anyways, there has to be a runner up. This doll inspired the horror movie, Child's Play, where every movie buff knows, the good guy doll, named Chucky. Robert was given to artist Robert Eugene's son Otto in 1906 by an unhappy servant who practiced black magic. Throughout his childhood Otto's parents heard him playing, and conversing with the doll, assuming he was replying to himself in a disguised voice. He is considered one of the most haunted objects in the world, according to Wikipedia. Neighbors claimed to have seen the doll moving from window to window when the family were out. Sometimes the doll would emit a terrifying giggle, and the Otto's family caught glimpses of it running from room to room. In the night Eugene would scream, and when his parents ran to the room, they would find furniture knocked over and Eugene in bed, looking incredibly scared, telling them that Robert did it. In addition, guests claimed to have seen Robert's expression change before their eyes and he often blinked. When Eugene died in 1974, the doll was left in the attic until the house was bought again. The new family included a 10-year-old girl, who became Robert's new owner. It was not long before the girl began screaming out in the night, claiming that Robert moved about the room and even attempted to attack her on multiple occasions. More than 30 years later, she still tells interviewers that the doll was alive and wanted to kill her. Number 1. The Annabelle Doll. The best till last, the doll that's name strikes fear into everyone that even just mentions the name. She was made famous by the most well-known paranormal investigators in the world Ed and Lorraine Warren. They both documented many famous hauntings, and Annabelle is still kept in their haunted museum. Their famous cases also included the Amityville Horror House. Sadly, Ed died on the 23rd of August, 2006, and Lorraine passed away on April the 18th, 2018. May they both rest in peace. They were undisputedly responsible for making the paranormal genre what it is today. The cult movie, The Conjuring shined the spotlight on the famous paranormal couple, Ed and Lorraine Warren. They were paranormal investigators who investigated cases like the Amityville haunting and the case that became the haunting in Connecticut. To this day artifacts from their work are viewable at the Warrens' occult museum. The crown jewel of this collection has to be the Annabelle doll. The Annabelle doll was given to a girl named Donna by her mother in 1970. Donna and her roommate, Angie, noticed the doll would switch positions or move around the apartment when they weren't looking. Eventually they began finding messages on parchment paper like, help me. Even though they did not keep parchment paper in the apartment, they brought in a medium who concluded the doll was possessed by the ghost of a girl who was buried underneath the apartment. The invents increased Annabelle was found with a red substance coming out of her hands, moving around. And more. Lou awoke one night from a deep sleep and in panic. Once again he had a reoccurring bad dream. Only this time somehow, something seemed different. It was as though he was awake but couldn't move. He looked around the room but couldn't discern anything out of the ordinary, and then it happened. Looking down toward his feet he saw the doll, Annabelle. It began to slowly glide up his leg, moved over his chest and then stopped. Within seconds the doll was strangling him. Paralyzed and gasping for breath. Lou, at the point of asphyxiation, blacked out. Lou awoke the next morning, certain it wasn't a dream, Lou was determined to rid himself of that doll and the spirit that possessed it. Lou, however, would have one more terrifying experience with Annabelle.
Preparing for a road trip the next day, Lou and Angie were reading over maps alone in her apartment. The apartment seemed eerily quiet. Suddenly, rustling sounds coming from Donna's room, aroused fear that someone had possibly broken into the apartment. Lou determined to figure out who or what it was, quietly made his way to the bedroom door. He waited for the noises to stop before entering and turning on the light. The room was empty, except for Annabelle whom was tossed on the floor in the corner. Lou scoured the room for forced entry but nothing was out of place. But as he got close to the doll, he got the distinct impression that somebody was behind him. Spinning around he was quick to realize that nobody else was there. Then in a flash he found himself grabbing for his chest, doubled over, cut and bleeding. His shirt was stained with blood, and upon opening his shirt there, on his chest was what looked to be seven distinct claw this. marks, three vertically and four horizontally, all were hot like burns. These scratches healed almost immediately, half gone the next day, and fully gone by day two. To this day Annabelle lives in the occult museum. Her locked case is holy water encrusted. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when we publish our videos. Can we also say, please leave a comment. We can only make the channel better through your feedback. I am Angel, I have been your haunted narrator throughout the video, please send your submissions of Top 10 Top 5 or single locations, also remember we do everything paranormal. We cover everything from ghosts to poltergeists and aliens to Bigfoot and the Sasquatch. So get submitting to paranormalnights.tv at gmail.com